Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Are you ready for the word? Come on, just where you are, let's just pray together. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that we can humble ourselves today under your mighty hand, declaring how much we need you, that without you we can do absolutely nothing. But with you, all things are possible. We are not a people without hope because we have you on our side. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Lord, we thank you. Come and take your place in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. And are you enjoying your holiday? All right. And did you get some nice presents? All right, wonderful. The greatest gift of all, our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, that's why we celebrate today His birthday. Amen. We celebrate Him being born into this world. But the greatest celebration is that day when Christ is also born into our lives as individuals. Amen. The day that we become born again. What a great celebration. And... Um, Last week, we looked at God's plan for our lives. Come and turn to your neighbor and say, God has a great plan for your life. Amen. And uh, we saw that in the end that the plan of God for our lives is to empower people. God is all about people. And that's why the greatest commandment, Matthew chapter 7, is love God, love people. The word is, and in this commandment, all the laws and all the prophets, all the rules and regulations, they are fulfilled in this one law. Love God, love people. Isn't that powerful? And that's why today as we look at celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, it connects with that. Because God had a specific defined plan with Jesus coming to the earth. And although many people will celebrate Christmas today without having a revelation of the purpose of the birth of Christ, many people today will abstain from bad habits because it's Christmas. <laughs> many people will do good things today because it's Christmas. Many families will have joy today because it's Christmas because their lives are going to change for this day for the sake of Christmas. People are saying goodbye to bad habits for this day because it's Christmas and doing right things. Amen. And that's why I'm glad that even those who are on holiday connecting with us uh, on, on YouTube and Facebook Live and on uh, my3c.tv website, uh, wherever you are, it's, it's great to even stay connected during the festive season. And I want to encourage you, make sure that you remain faithful to God. As Pastor Bird always says, the devil never goes on holiday. He does not take a rest. But it's also the same with God. God doesn't take a break. God doesn't need a break from his children. Amen. And that's why make sure in this time that you remain faithful. Get to God. If you want to have a blessed time with your family, make sure that you stay connected to God. Amen. A family that prays together is a family that stays together. Make sure wherever you are that you connect to the services, uh, that, you, that you be in church every week, that you have your time where you can meet with God personally, where God can give you the strength, even on holiday. Amen? That we don't come back from holiday and then we need another break. So uh, let's make sure that we stay connected to God in this time. So Christmas... As, uh, as believers, is not just limited to one day per annum. Although many people might experience it only as a one-day thing, uh, there's an expiry date to that blessing that they experience. It's like a toy that is broken. It's like the food that reaches its expiry date or like an event that ends. And then after that, it's business as normal. You see, but as a born-again believer, as a child of God, all the benefits that is included in the birth of Christ is ours every day of our lives. Amen. The joy that some families experience on Christmas 
is what we can have and what we have every day of our lives. The peace and all the benefits. And that's why I want us today to look at what the Word of God says about the purpose of the, the birth of Christ. That we may know that because if I don't know the reason for this celebrate, celebration and this festive season, I might miss it and it might not be true for me. The worst thing would be to celebrate Christmas but to miss Christ. You see, many people are celebrating the Christmas, the birth of Christ, without having a revelation of why Jesus had to be born into this world. Why? For what purpose? What are the benefits? And that's why I believe that through the word today, that God is going to dispel some lies. God is going to give us some confidence and, and, uh, um, and the benefits that came with the birth of Christ. Because we know that with, with a baby being born, a lot more comes than just the baby. Amen. There's a lot more in the package. Hallelujah. And, uh, and that's the same with what we're going to look at today. So looking at Luke chapter 1, verse 76 to 79, here we see the father of John the Baptist, Zechariah. We see him after the birth of John the Baptist, prophesying over John, declaring that he would be a prophet of the Most High and that he would prepare the way for Jesus' arrival. Now this is important because at that stage when Jesus was born and when Jesus was about to step into his ministry, he had no disciples to send ahead, like what he did when he got his 12 disciples. He would send them ahead into the different cities, and they would kind of do advertising and prepare the way for his arrival there so that he could preach the gospel and do the work of the kingdom. But at this stage, he had no one. And that's why God sent John the Baptist ahead of him to prepare the way. And listen to this prophecy. He said, and you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through the forgiveness of sins. What a great purpose John the Baptist had in his life to inform people, to teach people, to give people the clarity and the wisdom of how to receive salvation as a result of the forgiveness of their sin. No wonder when he saw Jesus, he said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. That's what he preached. So in the book of Mark chapter 2 verse 17, we see that Jesus had exactly the same calling than John the Baptist, in that he proclaimed salvation to sinners. He came to call sinners to repentance. Mark 2 verse 17, the word says, and when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well don't need a physician, but those who are sick, I came to call not the righteous, but sinners. Jesus didn't come. Jesus wasn't born into this world to reach out to the righteous. His focus primarily was to save sinners. And the very thing that you might think today that might be the thing that disqualifies you from being saved is actually the thing that qualifies you to be saved. Because he didn't come for those who are right. Amen. He is the one who makes us right with God. Amen. In 1 Timothy 1 verse 15, the word says, The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hallelujah. This is so powerful. Because as we continue today, we will see that the same purpose that was on John was also the same purpose that was on Jesus, was also and is also the same purpose that God has with our lives. 
The word says here, you will tell people of God's salvation through forgiveness of their sins because of God's tender mercy. You know, so many people have an image of God as this rude, judgmental, angry, wrathful God. But the word says that Jesus came to the earth to give us a revelation of the heart of the Father. The word says in John 3 verse 16, we've heard it twice already this morning. For God so loved the world, sinners, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He was sent into this world, verse 17, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. We need a revelation of this. If we don't want to walk with that continual judgment, that sense of sinfulness and wickedness in our hearts, where we can truly be free, God must give us a revelation of his love. Amen. Jesus, the word says here, uh, as he continued to prophesy over John, he said, because of the tender mercy, God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us. The morning light. After a night of darkness, it is, isn't it beautiful when you look at the horizon, when you wake up in the morning, and that light breaks through? Isn't that powerful? Why? He says, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. You see, it starts with sitting in darkness. It starts with our association, where we associate with darkness. But then it turns into that shadow of death, where you are now captured, where you are now in captivity. And the word says here that Jesus, even today, is the light that shines in our darkness. And the one who delivers us from the shadow of death. Listen to this word. In John 12 verse 46. He says, I have come into the world as light. That whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. Let me tell you, you might find yourself in darkness. When I think about someone sitting in darkness, I think about someone hiding to catch someone. Amen. Sitting in darkness. And then he speaks about in the shadow of death, where it's no longer, you don't have a choice anymore. You see, it doesn't matter where you find yourself. Jesus was born into this world. That whoever finds themselves currently in darkness by choice, or in the shadow of death, where they have no choice, that God will deliver them through the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He says here to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. There's nothing as great in our lives as the peace of God. You know, we are surrounded by so many changing factors, challenging factors, and we so easily become anxious and fearful and timid when we look at the things that we're facing and even the new year ahead of us and, and uh, the economy and the, the, the price increases and everything that we deal with in our nation and in our families and marriages. It's so easy to become fearful and anxious. Even as a person of faith, once you have received God's vision and His light for your life and you step out in faith, that's also, if without God, it's fearful. Amen? It's challenging. But the word says, be anxious for nothing. He says, be anxious for nothing, but pray about everything. Even in the season, make sure that you continue to pray about things. If you don't pray about it, nobody prays about it. Amen. We cannot take it for granted that somebody somewhere is praying for your marriage, praying for your family, praying for your children. Amen. He says, and the peace of God, 
the peace of God, not the peace of this world. The peace of this world will take your mind off the stuff for a moment. But the peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. So Jesus in uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 says, He Himself is our peace. In verse 18 He says, And He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. Amen. Jesus is our peace. Come on, say with me, Jesus is my peace. Amen. Hallelujah. When God is my peace, my life is not in pieces. In Luke chapter 2, verse 9 to 14. Luke chapter 2, verse 9 to 14. This is now where, where um, the angel appeared to the shepherds. So first we have Zechariah prophesying over his own son. Now we have an angel declaring and announcing the arrival of Jesus Christ. And this is what he said. He said, And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. The glory of God speaks about the nature of God. And the thing is that their nature was so contrary to the nature of God that they were fearful because they did not qualify. They were scared and intimidated because they did not cut the level. They fell short. But the first thing that the angel said to them was, don't be afraid. Fear not. Fear not. There are so many things that brings us to the place of fear. Whether it's because of religious misinterpretation, where we were trained and taught incorrectly about the nature of our Heavenly Father. Because of our own inability to please God. Because of our own awareness of coming judgment that it, it brings fear in our hearts. And this is where the shepherds found themselves. But the angel said, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings. I bring you good news. Is there any area in your life where you are fearful this morning? Where you feel that as a dad, as a mother, as a child, as a colleague, as a businessman, as a, as a man or a woman in this nation, I'm not doing it. I can't do this. Is there any area that causes fear and timidity in your life? God says, I've got good news for you this morning. I've got good news for you. But you know what? There's something about good news that we need to get. Listen to what he says here. He says, don't be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. You see, I don't want to hear about good things, but then I don't qualify. Amen. I mean, you know, it's, it's like, let's say we're handing out food somewhere and the people are excited. Oh, yes. And then they find out, no, it's not for you. It's only for other people. The good news is now irrelevant to me. You see, but because of Jesus Christ, every person, he says, to all people are included in the good news that God has for people. Amen? And that's why you must know that you are included. You are included in this in this plan of redemption that God had with Jesus Christ when he sent him to the earth. God had you in mind and he still has you in mind right now, regardless of where you might find yourself. Darkness, shadow of death, brokenness, there's good news for you through Jesus Christ. Amen. You are a beneficiary. He says, the angel said to him, don't be afraid. I've got good news for you. Great joy to all people. For there is born this day in the city of David. Born. Born speaks about a new beginning. It speaks about a new life. Amen. Can you remember when your child was born? 
The moment your child was born, everything changed. Hallelujah. Five hours before birth, you could still leave when you wanted to, do what you wanted to. Now, all of a sudden, everything changed. This is the same with the birth of Jesus. The moment that he was born, everything changed forever. Amen. Life can never, ever be the same again. He says, for there was born to you this day. Come on, say with me, this day. Okay. Today is your day of breakthrough. Today is your day of breakthrough. Amen. Because of Jesus Christ. He says, there is born for you in the city of David a Savior who is Christ Jesus our Lord. You know what? Our lives are not hidden to God. God is not unfamiliar with you where you are right now. God knows you by name. He even knows right now how many hair you have on your head. He knows your anxieties. He knows your fears. He knows your dreams. God knows you. Amen. But the word says here that he's our Savior. So if you find yourself drowning and you are drowning in private, God knows about that. And he has sent a savior for you right now in your situation. And that's why we are not a people without hope. We're not a people without hope. Jesus is the expression of the love of God towards humanity. Amen. So he saves us. 1 Timothy 1.15, we looked at it earlier. The saying is trustworthy, deserving of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. What do you need saving from? You see, because until you identify that you are drowning, God cannot save. Amen? You cannot help someone who don't want your help. That's why the word says, let the weak say, I'm strong. Let the poor say, I'm rich. Let the unsaved say, I believe. Amen? Amen? Luke 19, verse 5, the word says here, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up to Zacchaeus, and he said to him, hurry, come down, for I must stay at your house today. This is a wonderful story. Jesus came to do a house visit in a broken, messed up family's house. Amen. And as they opened the door to Jesus to come in and to have a dinner with them, Jesus turned their lives around. We know the story how Zacchaeus got up. He repented from his sins, his corruption, and he committed to change. And then Jesus said the following, Today salvation has come to this house. Jesus was born into this world so that he can be born into your family into your marriage, and into your life. And then Jesus ended with this. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Amen. Jesus came to seek the lost. Maybe you're here this morning, but you are here because Jesus has been seeking you. Jesus has been reaching out. You think that it's a friend that invited you to church. You think that it's just an emotion why you're connected to the television this morning. No, it's the power of God because the word says no one can come to the Father unless the Holy Spirit draws him. Amen. There's nothing that we can call our own, not even salvation, not even repentance of sin. We cannot do that in our own strength because as long as we are blind and we justify our sins and our weaknesses, we cannot repent of that. It is a work from God, from start to end. Jesus came to preach the gospel. Luke 4 verse 18, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to set the captives free, the recovery of sight to the blind. And then he says this, he says, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to all the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. Amen. 
Jesus became a witness of the truth. Through the scripture, we can see now today that the birth of Jesus through the eyes of Zechariah, through the eyes of the angel, had the same agenda and the same outcomes before the birth of Jesus, at the birth of Jesus, and now in the book of Acts chapter 26, we even see the calling of God on the church, the calling of God on the apostle Paul, his purpose that it also had the same agenda and the same outcome. Come on, let's look at this. Acts 26 verse 16. He says, yes, I'm sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes. Amen. So they may turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness for their sins. So that they may turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, and be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. We must know this, that the same agenda, the same purpose of Jesus when he was born into this world is also the same purpose and the same agenda when we were born again into Christ. His purpose is my purpose. His life is my life. As Jesus is, so am I. Amen. Christ was not just born into this world, but also born into our lives. And through your life, He's born into your community, born into your extended family, so that they can be born into their lives as well. I want you to make this declaration with me. With Jesus, the purpose of my new birth is to seek and save the lost. To reveal God's love to sinners. To bring light to those who are in darkness. To bring people to the peace of God. To serve my world. To preach the gospel. To bear witness of the truth. In loving God and loving people. Amen. Praise the Lord. No wonder Jesus came and he said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Isn't it great to be a beneficiary? Isn't it great to be the recipient of the goodness of God through the life of our Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. There's so much more to celebrate than a temporary gift lying under a tree, but to receive the eternal gift of God that will not just change my life for one day for a moment, but that will change my life, my family, into eternity. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet this morning. What a pleasure to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the greater celebration is to celebrate His birth within our lives, us being born again in Christ. Amen. As the Word says that no one can come to the Father unless the Holy Spirit draws him. No one. It is a work of God. And that's why we must know today that we are not here by accident today. But God purposed us to be here. God had a plan. God has a, a purpose with your life this morning. And that's why He included you. That you might receive the good news of Jesus Christ. And therefore, while every head is bowed and every eye closed... The greatest gift of all gifts is the gift of eternal life from our Father.
And the word says that unless a man be born again, that he cannot enter eternal life. He, can, he cannot in, in, uh, enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, for us to become a child of God, you need to be born of God. Being a good person doesn't make you a child of God. Having said a prayer years ago doesn't make you right with God. You can live right for many years and then suddenly lose it. But I've got good news for you. You can also live wrong for many years and suddenly come to your senses and receive your life back today. And that's why I believe that you're with us this morning. And therefore, if you're standing here this morning and you know that you are not right with God, there's this darkness inside of you, there's this shadow of death holding you in its vice. And you say, Marius, today I need a Savior. I'm drowning. I need a Savior. I need Jesus Christ. While every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you're that person, know this, that you are the focus of the love of God this morning. God is not angry at you. God loves you. And therefore this morning, while every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you're standing here this morning, you say, Maurice, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to be a child of God. At the count of three, I want you just to quickly slip up your hand and put it down that I can include you in this prayer. One, two, three. Quickly raise your hand. God bless you. Thank you very much. God bless you. I see those hands. Quickly slip up your hand. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see those hands. God bless you. You can put it down. Thank you there at the back. God bless you. That uh, knocking on your heart this morning, that's the Holy Spirit. Don't reject the Holy Spirit this morning. You are here because God purposed you to be here. For the last time, if you are that person, quickly slip up your hand. One, two, three. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you stand here this morning. You say, Marius, you know what? There was a time in my life where I have received Jesus, but I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I've backslidden. My heart has grown cold, but I want to come back to God today again. Come on, if you're that person, quickly slip up your hand as well. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. I see those hands. You know what the Word of God says? That the day of salvation is now. Today is a day of salvation. Because none of us know whether we will be here tomorrow. The truth is this, that some people left their homes this morning and they will never return there again. This is a fact. They don't even know it. And that's why when it comes to salvation, we need to take it very serious. Because we don't know if that same drawing power that's at work within you now, you don't know if you will ever in your life, you cannot assume that you will ever in your life have the same calling from God, drawing of the Holy Spirit that you can reconcile with your Father. And therefore, for the last time today, those joining us online as well, if you say, Marius, I'm receiving Jesus today, I just want you to say in your heart, say, yes, Lord, I receive you today. And those in, the, in our auditoriums, just quickly slip up your hand for the last time. If God's talking to you today, you know that you're hearing the voice of God. Quickly slip up your hand. One, two, three. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. I see all those hands. Now, this is such a powerful decision that I want to pray with you. I want to ask you one more thing. If you are sitting here and standing here today, you say, Maurice, this is me. I want you to quickly take your belongings. Please don't leave it on your seat. Take your belongings. We're going to close now and come and join me in front. I want to say a personal prayer with you this morning. Quickly come to the front. Come on, let's give them a big hand. God bless you.
Hallelujah. I want to give you one more chance. Many of you raised your hands. You're not in front. We all had to make this decision somewhere in our lives. We all had to take a stand and say, Lord, I'm coming back. This is a step of faith. And I want to ask you one thing. If you're standing next to someone, don't you want to ask them, can I go out with you? Can I, can I walk out with you to the front? Because this is your Christmas. You're not going to miss Christ today. You're going to have Christmas. Amen. It's going to become a reality in your life. So for the last time, come on. Ask the person next to you, can I come out? And then you come out with that person. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now just where you are, I want you to relax. I want you to smile. Amen. This is your day of salvation. Those of you who raised your hand, you're still standing in your seat. That's fine. Just where you are, we're going to pray this prayer. I want you to pray this from your heart. Even those joining us online, pray this prayer from your heart. And I know that God is going to do the work right there in your life this morning. Amen. Come on, let's pray together. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I acknowledge my failure. I acknowledge my sin. But right now, as I repent, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, please come into my life. Take out this old heart. Give me a new heart. Wash me. Cleanse me. And I thank you, Lord, According to your word, I am a child of God. I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 or log on to my 3 c TV. Or you could write to us at P.O. Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word pray followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word partner to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates, and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.